the relationship became fragile. Okay. Because Paul Mooney had Richard's son by that time. So Richard passed away in 2005. Where was his and Paul's relationship at that time? Well, from JoJo Dancer on, the relationship became fragile. Okay. Because Paul Mooney had Richard's son by that time. Okay. And he violated. And that's any man uh, if you violate their children like that. Mm -hmm. So Paul took advantage of, of the situation. Mm -hmm. And so from there on, whatever Paul Mooney was to Richard, and there was a time that Paul Mooney was Richard's friend. You know, I acknowledge that. Um, which is why the gay community really couldn't say anything mm -hmm. they attempted to about Richard because Paul Mooney was his friend mm -hmm. and they laughed. So when Paul did what he did, it was a violation of friendship first and then my son, you know. Um, right. And in some circles that's supposed to be dealt with. So. Did, was there ever a conversation to retaliate against that? Yes, yes, yeah, of course. How, to what extent? To the extent of, of Richard didn't want him on the planet no more. He, he shared it with me and he said he wanted somebody uh, killed. Mm -hmm. Richard, that wasn't his conversation, so I just attribute that he must be high right now. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it's Friday. This is the high day, so it's Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday. He's, you know, by Wednesday he'll be straight because mm -hmm. I knew the pattern. And, and I asked him again because Richard never spoke like that. Mm -hmm. And I just said, do you remember what you said to me last week? And he was, he was on it so clear, it was like, okay, it's serious. And so then I asked him, what is it about? He said, a million dollars, I want somebody killed. And I was like, damn, I'm not a killer. I'm not that person, but I did give it thought. I know some people, some damn well, okay. you know, and the biggest problem with those people would have been you saying a million dollars to them because they would have did it for like 10 grand. Right. And so I asked him, what was it about? And this is your first time hearing about the this incident? Is, no, this is the first, when he told me the first time, I thought he was high. I just made that high conversation. Mm -hmm. But because he was so adamant about it, I asked him again that Wednesday, and then he went into detail. And that's when he told me what went on. And he told me who did it. Mm -hmm. And he was hurt by it. Yeah. He was hurt because it happened to his son. And he was really hurt, which I don't think Paul Mooney understood because someone that I took as a friend did that to me. Right. Um, wow. Okay. And this is his son was like young at the time? Yeah, Richard Jr. Yeah, Richard was a little boy. Rewinding us discussing that prior asked or requested, was looking for someone to pretty much put a hit on Paul right. for a million dollars. It didn't, it, you, you know, years later, it did not happen. Was there a, a reason why? It didn't happen because Richard caught on fire, Richard Byrne. And that's what saved Paul Mooney's life today, present day, is because Richard caught on fire. Mm -hmm. And then that became the primary. Before that, it was Paul Mooney. Mm -hmm. You did this to my son. Uh, it was betrayal, my son, and then you pretended like it didn't happen. So had Richard not caught on fire, Paul Mooney would not be here. He wouldn't be living. Did Rich ever, uh, I guess his son came to him, Pryor Jr. came to him about the incident? Or was it caught on like surveillance? Uh, uh, um, I don't think it was on surveillance. I don't think Paul was that stupid. But somewhere along the way, Richard found out. Um, yeah. And I remember letting Richard Jr. know, here's how your father thought about it. And Richard cried then because he didn't think his father knew. Mm -hmm. And I said, your father, this is what he wanted done to Paul Mooney. And Richard looked at me and he said, really? I said, yeah, he told me everything. And I was able to repeat it to Junior. And he cried. He looked at me and he started crying. He said, I didn't know my father. I said, yeah, your father knew. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he was going to do what he thought was the right thing to do, and I did too. Oh wow! Oh yeah, I did too. Because that's something that yeah, you, that's a complete violation. Well, it's it's not only a complete violation, but it's something 
that is prevalent amongst us that we sweep under the rug and pretend it don't happen, that our uncles are violating our daughters and, you know, but that goes on amongst us. You cannot turn the slave thing off because we're in 2019.